If you guys have been following me, you'd know that I got my LG G4 about 24 hours back. In this time, I've been asked one question a lot. Why did LG go with the Snapdragon 808 for the G4 instead of the 810? And it's a question that makes a lot of sense. In fact, it's a question that I've, I've been asking myself. On paper, the Snapdragon 810 has four high-performance uh, Cortex-A57 cores and four, four uh, power-saving Cortex-A53 cores, whereas the 808 has only two high-performance Cortex-A57 cores and four power-saving A53 cores as well. And also note that the cores on the 810 are clocked higher, making the 810 the obvious better chip, on paper at least. And that's without even taking the GPU into consideration, by the way. Samsung says the 810 overheats. Qualcomm obviously denies that. So I decided to dig a little deeper. I took my LG G4 and a G Flex 2 that I already had. And the G Flex 2 has Snapdragon 810 inside, by the way. And I decided to stress the CPU a little bit. Run a Comport benchmark and to do. The initial scores, as you guys can see, were similar. A few thousand uh, more or less doesn't make a difference. It, it, it's a little bit of irregularity you can expect uh, with benchmarks. But being similar, it already meant that something was wrong. Because Samsung uses the same for, for Cortex A57 plus 4 Cortex uh, A53 combo on its Exynos chips for the uh, Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge. And they score much higher. Anyway, I wanted to see if there was overheating. So basically what happens when a phone overheats is that, well, your phone's not going to melt. The clock speeds are going to be lower, throttling sets in. So I ran on to do again and as expected, the G Flex, G Flex 2 score fell sharply. The G4 on the other hand held its ground. So I ran on to do again for a third time and a fourth and a fifth. And since I'm an insomniac who just couldn't sleep, I ran it again. And as you can see, there was some very aggressive throttling going on with the G Flex 2. So right from the second time I ran Antutu, 2, the G Flex 2 was scoring lesser than, say, a mid-range MediaTek chip like the uh, MT6572 scores. But then again, maybe it's just LG and their weird software. If only, if only there was another phone in the market with Snapdragon 810 inside that I could test. Well, there is. There is, actually. I do have an HTC One M9 in the studio, so I went ahead, charged it, and let both phones cool for about 20 minutes so that the playing field's level, and I ran on to do again. Sure, the M9 outscored the uh, G4, but once I ran it the second time, the performance sharply dropped. And then, just for kicks, I ran it once more, but as you guys can see, there seems to be something wrong with the Snapdragon 810 chip. It does heat up a lot, leading, leading to some very aggressive throttling. Now, I get it. Numbers are in everything. But even with real-time usage scenarios, uh, like say, for example, this other day, uh, I was testing the G Flex 2. I was using it as my primary device. And I had to meet someone from Lenovo. Okay. And they sent me some location, uh, I did not really recognize it, so I wanted to check it out on Google Maps. I'd been tweeting uh, for about 10-15 minutes in the cab before that, and the UI was so stu was stuttering, it was lagging. Uh, I just couldn't open up Maps for about a minute or two. And that's not something I expect from a flagship phone with a flagship chip. And this is something that is very predominant on the G Flex 2. Not quite as much on the M9 though. So yeah, it's not only the chip, even LG has some issues with the G Flex 2, but that's a different video totally. So why am I shooting this video? Well, it's because this is something I want to let you guys know. I would have to talk to you about every time I review one of these three devices, uh, the G Flex 2, the uh, G4, the HTC One M9, and I really didn't want to spend three to four minutes talking about this in each review video. So I'd basically brief you guys about it in the review video and send you over to this video for more information. So anyway, what do you guys think about LG's decision to go with the 808 on the G4 instead of the 810? Uh, me personally, I believe LG didn't have any other choice. And th this is one of the reasons why Samsung went with the Exynos, which worked out great for them. HTC kind of revised the One M9 to the One M9 Plus with MediaTek in inside. 
Well, you know, the jury is still out on that. But uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And would you guys be willing to buy a Snapdragon 810, a phone with Snapdragon 810 inside? Maybe a brand comes out of the phone and they say it's Snapdragon 810 second gen. Would you be willing to give it a shot? So anyway, just let me know in the comments below. And I am working on the G4. I'm working on the G Flex too. I, w I know I'm really backlogged on videos. Uh, there are tons of devices that I've unboxed, but I'm yet to do reviews on. My apologies, guys. I'm pulling all nighters. I'm trying to get it done as fast as I can. Uh, and you're gonna see. You're gonna be seeing more of those reviews coming out this week and the next. So, yeah. Thanks for your patience and I'll make sure I get it done. So I guess that's it guys. A quick little video on, on something that I found really interesting. This is not a review. This is not a gaming video. But I still thought I'd make this video. Hope you guys like it. If you want to see more videos like this, do give this video a thumbs up. If there's something you didn't like about the video, vote it down. Do let me know what you didn't like so that uh, I could go back, fix that the next time around and hopefully turn that thumbs down into a thumbs up. So I guess that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.